Welcome everybody to your very first anatomy and physiology lecture. I'm Dr. Mark Todorovic and in this first lecture we're going to set you up for the remaining lecture series by defining some very important terms and concepts for anatomy and physiology. So the very first thing I want to tell you is what anatomy means and what physiology means. Very simply, anatomy means the human body or the structure of the human body and physiology refers to the function of the human body. Now if we focus on anatomy just to begin with, you can divide anatomy up into some different divisions. So first of all is what's called topographical anatomy. Now topographical anatomy is also known as gross anatomy or micro, sorry, or macroscopic anatomy. So gross anatomy, also known as macroscopic anatomy. Now this gross or macroscopic or topographical anatomy can be further subdivided into what's called regional anatomy, surface anatomy, neuroanatomy, endoscopic and imaging anatomy. All of these are types of gross or macroscopic or topographical anatomy. Basically it's referring to what you can see with the naked eye. Now the other type of anatomy is what's called embryological or developmental anatomy. So developmental anatomy refers to embryology and then the subsequent organogenesis. So remember embryology is where you begin with a single cell and it starts to grow and divide into a number of different layers and then these layers start to turn into what looks like an embryo. And this subsequently leads into this, from this embryogenesis into organogenesis where the organs and organ systems start to develop. So this is what we call the developmental anatomy. And in our lecture series, you'll find that Dr. Matt Barton will be doing this. And the final type of anatomy is what we call, so if we started with gross or macroscopic anatomy, we're going to finish off with microscopic or sub-microscopic anatomy. Now microscopic anatomy is basically what we call histology and is the study of cells and subcellular structures. And that's histology. So they're the basic divisions of anatomy that we'll be looking at in this lecture series. Now, the other thing we need to talk about is when we start to describe anatomical terms, you need to realize that we're referring to, always referring to the patient being in or the human body being in what's called the anatomical position. So the anatomical position you must remember is this. Feet shoulder width apart, toes facing forwards, hands by the side, palms facing forwards, and the head and eyes facing forwards as well. You will always describe anatomical and physiological terms in regards to this anatomical position, okay? Now, in addition to that, you need to be aware of what we call planes. Now, planes are, if we were to describe the body after it's been cut or sectioned, that's what these planes are referring to. And there's four major types of planes you need to know, okay? So let's write down planes. So the planes you need to be aware of, the first plane is what's called the median plane. Now median sounds like middle, and that's exactly what it's referring to. The median plane is if you were to cut the body straight down the middle, separating it into equal left and right sides. So equal, so it's immediately down the middle. So that's what the median plane is referring to. The next plane is what we call the sagittal Plane. Now the sagittal plane goes down the sagittal suture. Now if you have a look at a skull, you can see that it looks like the skull pieces have been stitched together. And there's a couple of these stitches, one of which goes like this, front to back, back to front. Okay, And that's the sagittal plane. Now you may be thinking, isn't that the median plane? And the answer to that is, yes it is. But the sagittal plane also refers to any cut that goes left or right of the median plane. And this is also known as parasagittal, okay? So you could have a cut that goes down here, which could take my right arm, right leg off, but still is going straight down the middle, still separating the body into right and left pieces, but they're unequal pieces. So this is known as sagittal or parasagittal planes.
Another plane is called a coronal plane. Now, if you look at that skull and look at the sutures again, you'll see that there's another suture that goes across like this. And if you were to cut down this suture, you'd separate the body into front and back pieces, also known as anterior and posterior segments. So this is the coronal, coronal plane. And then the last plane is the plane that can cut the body through like this and separating the body into upper and lower pieces, also known as superior and inferior segments. So this is called the transverse or horizontal plane. And again, this can happen any way through the body, transverse or horizontal plane. Now, the important, an important point here is that if you're a radiologist or an aspiring radiologist, it may also be known as the transaxial or axial plane and often refers to when you look at an image within the axial plane, looking at it from the feet upwards. So you know what a bird's eye view is from the head downwards? Well, the axial plane often refers to looking at when we talk about imaging from the feet upwards. So these are the four major planes. Now the next thing is that you need to be aware of some other terms that we use for anatomy. Now, I was saying superior and inferior before, and I was saying anterior and posterior. Now, superior means towards the head. It also is referred to as cranial or cephalic. So if you read terminology and it refers to superior, cranial or cephalic, it's referring to towards the head, okay? Inferior means towards the feet, and sometimes you'll see the word caudal in this. Now, caudal is more so an embryological term and means towards the hind limb, okay? So often for an adult, you don't really use that term caudal, but you can say inferior, towards the feet. So you could use an example saying that the, to use simple terms, that the knee is inferior to the hip, okay? That the chin is superior to the nipple, okay? Now, other terms include medial and lateral. So medial again means towards the middle, so median was a section, but medial means towards the midline, so you've got the midline of the body, so medial towards the midline, and then lateral means towards the side of the body, okay? So your arms and legs are lateral, they're lateralized, okay, to the body. If you look at the anatomical position, look at the digits of my hand, you could say that my little finger, my pinky finger is, what would you say? medial compared to the thumb. So therefore the thumb is lateral compared to the pinky, referring to whether it's towards the side or towards the middle, okay? Now other terms include abduction and adduction, and that often refers to moving away or coming back towards the body. And this is easy to remember because we've all heard the word abduction before. Abduction means to take something away. So if you were to abduct your arm, you're taking it away from your body. If you were to adduct your arm, you're bringing it close together. And that refers to if you're doing it with your hand or if you're doing it with your leg or so forth, okay? Now, these are just some of the basic terms. Now, other terms you need to remember is when we talk about the limbs and we're referring to relationships of the limbs, we sometimes use the words distal and proximal. Okay, now what this is referring to, a lot of students get mixed up when we refer to distal and proximal, but this is what we mean. You know that with your arm, that you've got the side of attachment to the trunk. So here at the shoulder, okay? This is the side of attachment. Now we use the term proximal and distal in reference to the side of attachment. Distal means farther away from the side of attachment. Proximal means closest to. So you could say the elbow is proximal compared to the wrist, right? Or you could say the wrist compared to the elbow, elbow is distal. So these are the terms we use for the limbs when they're attached or any part of the body that's attached to the trunk. So basically the arms and the legs. Now these are some of the major terminologies. As we go through anatomy and physiology, we'll introduce some more, but this is a good way to begin, okay? So remember superior, inferior, anterior, posterior, front, back. Uh, make sure you remember anatomical position, proximal, distal. Make sure you understand that anatomy can be broken up into the macroscopic, the microscopic, and also the developmental, and we'll be going through all of these. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me, gubiosciences at gmail.com, and I'll be able to answer your questions. So that is the introductory video 
to anatomy and physiology.